Okay, what we're looking at here is a chainsaw-like device that I've designed with my son, Chance, that harvests the worm castings from the bottom of a flow-through worm bin. We'll show you some pieces of it. We have a handle at the end because it does require two people to operate it. We can see the chainsaw pieces going by, have them set about every five inches. It's got a number 40 chain. It's operated drill power. Got a set of handlebars on it from a 10 speed bicycle and a guide so that it doesn't pull through too far, which is a piece of angle iron, one inch by one inch. And we can see the chain can be tensioned by pulling the two plates on the end back. It has a couple of pillow blocks made out of PVC plastic to allow the gear inside to pivot correctly. We have two sheets of metal on each side sandwiched with a three quarter inch thick piece of Pine. For now, we'll see how long that lasts. We can always take it apart if need to, because you can see we'll use some countersink screws about every foot down to sandwich it in place. And then we built our own bearing system. It's not actually a seal bearing, it's just the gear mechanism runs on its own pivot just nice and loose. We'll look down inside you can see the see the wood down inside there so where it runs on seems to work pretty well. We've ran it through the worm bin one time already and that allows it to give us worm castings. And we see the chain hangs off the bottom a little right now with it sitting in the vise. What we're going to do here is plug it in and then we're going to run the chainsaw so that you can see how it operates. You can see the chain goes back and forth here. It goes around in a nice circle. It's doing a little hitting down there because it's hanging. Normally, the chain would be ran on its side. I'll show you that here in a minute. Very nice. So, unplug it. Okay, so what we get out of the worm bin is this wonderful casting that's here. We can see this was processed with one pass through this is a four foot by eight foot table so you can see this is four feet wide by probably three feet wide and a good two to three inches deep of nice worm casting that came from the bottom of the worm bin so what we're going to do is go outside take a look at the worm bin with the worm casting tool in place we won't run it through it because we just processed it yesterday so what we're looking at here is we're going to show you how to install the chainsaw into the worm bin. So what we're looking at now is you see it goes from both sides. We simply slide it all the way in. Once that's in, then the chainsaw can be turned on. And we can see it sticks through both sides, nice and even there. On top, we have some insulation, but you can see overall how the bottom of the bin has a slot through it. So the bottom can be cut completely out, like almost as if it was a, a piece of wood. So what we're going to do is flip up, we'll flip up the fabric on the top, 
and then then we're going to slide the foam panels. These are foam panels from outside entry doors. It's, they cut these out of the for making the windows and the doors. So I bought these and you come look at the inside of the bin. You can clearly see we have we have hundreds of thousands of worms in here and uh, we started off with only 5,000 worms. It's now grown to I don't even have a clue how many, but they eat through about 15 pounds of rabbit manure a day. And I add some cardboard now and then again just to keep them excited. If you look at the edge of the panels here, you can see how thick they are. The panel is, is about uh, two inches thick. It's a, again, as I say, it's an entry door for a house and they've cut this panel out in order to put the window in. And they sell these, um, and so I buy these and built the, we're gonna build several more of these worm bins to take care of all the manure we make with running the rabbit business that we do. Worm casting production at its best. You can see right now how full we are from there to the outside all the way down. So we're about, oh, a little over half full. And I harvested what you've seen on the table Yes, yesterday using the saw. Normally they would use a pull-through system, like a cable and a uh, piece of metal. But I decided to make a make a saw to do the process. Makes the worm bin nice and easy. And one thing that allows me to do as well is allows me to use a heater system. we're looking at here is a thermostat and the thermostat is connected to an electric heater wire the same thing you use for putting on your pipes outside so it doesn't use a lot of energy it's a 30 foot long cable and down inside the bed I, it, it's put in a circle it's just wrapped around and when it gets really cold outside below 40 degrees this is hooked up to 110 volts and it'll come on and it uses about one and a half amp. One and a half amps is what it'll pull. So it's fairly inexpensive to run, maybe $50 a year if it stayed on 24 hours a day, which we know it won't do that. So it'll be less than $50 to operate it. But that helps keep the worm bin activated during the winter time when it gets cold. So what I want to be able to do, and that's the idea of building this this chainsaw for harvesting the worm manure is I can have an insulated bottom that has the that will have that cable it, this particular bin does not have this process this particular bin has a bottom that I was going to use the cable design to take it out but I decided that was not a good method because if I have that on the bottom then I can't use this worm bin outside because the cable has to stay inside the worm manure. So, we will build the next bin to have this heater cable embedded into the foam that goes onto the bottom of the worm bin. And then we will use the chainsaw that we have built, the dirt chainsaw, I guess we would call that. We will use this to harvest the worm manure and we will change the design so that this, as you can see right here, this kind of stops us from going all the way through. So this post will be put to the inside and that will make it so we can go straight across the front. And the same thing, this post will be mounted to the inside as well. So there won't be any harm in what we're doing. This bin will have to wait because we used a, we used a, a, a great system on this one. So I'll have to wait till I get the next one built to be able to take this off. You can see a little remnants of what we had left from the other day. And we can see where the shape of the worm manure, you can see it's nice and square where it has fallen down. And maybe you can see that. And you see how it's nice and square. So it's cut right out of there. It's really neat, the process 
I'll do another video later on that actually shows it, but it's quite impressive to watch the chainsaw works. And what it does is it pulls all the worm castings come out and fall directly into a bucket opposed to having to get underneath. You can see we did lose a little bit when we started here on the ground. So you can see there's a little there as well, but we caught 99% of the manure. It comes directly off the bar. This will come around and it'll build up here on the side and then it'll just fall off into the bin. So we don't have to have anything underneath. You can see there's no worm manure underneath the bin at all. And that way we can keep it outdoors. And that was my goal was to design a worm bin that could be kept outdoors and not inside. And this bin has been operating for about six months. And the amount of manure you've seen it produced will come out probably once or twice a week as we continue forward with the with the adding of rabbit manure all right thanks for watching